What's up, everybody? This is Justin from GPE. As you see, I've just been finishing up an episode of MacGyver. <sighs> if I had that pocket knife, man, the things I could do with my cars. But sadly, I don't have that pocket knife. So I'm going to have to make do with what I have. And so here's what's going on. Here's the situation. The Supra, I have a check engine light on it now. I know, right? Right when I was starting to have fun with it, check engine light. Unfortunately, it's code 52. Code 52 has to do with knock sensors. Fortunately, I have another Supra. So we never really talk about that. So give me a second. We'll get right into that. So unlike all those clean garages on uh, people's videos that you see, I have a garage that is just, well, screaming in three, two, one. This is my garage. Ah, it's terrible. I know. Really terrible. But in the middle of all this, I have my other Mark III Supra which I was in the middle of doing a head swap. It's actually towards the end of the head swap on it. And if I get closer without falling and dying, um, you see timing belt's been done, has polished valve covers. This is a turbo model, um, but I still have the intake manifold, the exhaust manifold off, the turbos removed from it. And so I'm having problems with the knock sensors, but what I noticed on here, on this Supra, the previous owner was nice enough to rewire the knock sensors. So all the videos I see, which hold on a second, it's super hot in here. Get some air. All right, so here we go. All the other videos I've seen have said that Usually when you have an issue with code 52, it has to do with the knock sensor wiring and not the knock sensor itself. So um, what I'm going to have to do to get this taken care of is I'm going to have to move this rewire swap over to the other car. Um, but I'm going to wait until the evening when it's cooler. And I mean, man, this garage is terrible. So yeah. Too much stuff, man. Too much stuff. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to move this uh, wiring over to the other car and see if that solves code 52. So stay tuned for that. And I would do a time lapse, but pfft, we don't wait for the sun to go down. Oh, on a side note, here's the label. It's the Innovate Motorsports 3882 SCG1. Solenoid boost controller gauge kit. Here's how the back of the box looks like. Tilt your neck. Beyond that, uh, that Eddie, I just saw the chiropractor, Will's holding the camera stuff. All right, and I'll see you guys in the Super in a minute. MacGyver. morning so I was able to get the issue with my knock sensor taken care of I got it rewired straight to the ECU uh, was able to get it off of the other Supra and actually despite everything I read online at 270 pounds I'm falling trust me I'm trying to work on it anyway 270 pounds I was able to get these arms under the intake manifold and disconnect both knock sensors without dropping the alternator. So, I don't know. The force was on my side this time. All right, time to go to work. Boost controller's on. Hopefully it's set to about 10 PSI. We shall see. And I'll see you guys at the metering lights. So just before I get to the metering lights, I just kind of wanted to go into a little bit of the details about my new boost controller from Innovate. 
It's I talked about it before. It's an Innovate 3882 or the SCG-1. And it's an integrated boost controller, wideband, and it also takes care of the boost gauge and it also has a shift light on it. Now the cool thing about this boost controller is it's pretty intelligent. It combines the best of both worlds with the boost controller and the wideband so that you can set a pre-programmed um, amount of air fuel ratio that if you exceed that while in boost, after a certain boost pressure, what it'll do is it'll actually drop the pressure back down to wastegate. That, that way, this second, that way um, you don't have any issues with Okay, come on, dude. That way you don't have any issues with uh, boosting too high for what your fuel system can handle. If the car leans out, it'll automatically take it back down the wastegate. So right now I have it set at 10 PSI. And we'll see how that works. Traffic looks pretty light today too, so this should be awesome. All right, and let's go.
make sure I put some Teflon on them, on them to make sure that I'm not getting any type of uh, boost leak. It's just the nature of the beast. You always have to check on the turbo car for your boost leaks. And I'm pretty sure that I have a boost leak right now. But I could be wrong. Um, time will tell. Everything's really just uh, trial and error. I do know that it's running healthy. That third gear pop out, man. Need to take care of that. So the car is coming together. Little things here and there. It's still not perfect. Um, car is already able to slide, no problem. But what I really want to do is make a reliable, you know, 300 to 350 stock turbo, stock internals, and I want to keep it mild at that level. It's enough horsepower to slide this car despite its weight, still have some fun and maintain some reliability. Because it seems like with drift cars, reliability is reliability and drift do not go hand in hand. So I want to maintain that as much as I can. That way I can have the best drift season I possibly can. So about it. Um, I'll include some shots at the end of the video of this boost controller. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. So on a side note, hopefully you guys got to go over to Subaru, Subaru WRX's channel, uh, Smurfing WRX. Go over there and check out Joseph's video. He was able to put up Joseph's uh, video of his 76 Celica. It's pretty awesome. There really wasn't any mention of our channel on there, but Joseph is part of the channel. You might have seen he has a couple videos up on our channel right now. One of them is him at the autocross, which I'll include a description right here. And another one is a video of him just doing his debut on the channel, which is pretty cool. Um, definitely leave a comment down below if you want to see more of Joseph's content. You want to see more of that 76 Celica. It's pretty sick. Um, I'm a fan of the old school Japanese cars. Um, I'm a fan of all cars, really. But um, yeah, if you want to see more from Joseph, leave a comment below. Whoops. Struggle's real. Leave a comment below if you want to see more of Joseph's car. And we'll make sure that we uh, get him to post more content on the channel for you guys, okay? Well, almost, almost at work. Okay. I don't know what it is. The Chinese folks in this neighborhood never trust me. They always think I'm going to run them over. No matter how, stop, how long I stop at the stop sign, how long I wave them by, they don't care. They're like, nah, dude, you're going to kill us. Anyway, until next time, this is Justin signing out from GPE, GoPro, everything. Peace.